Hello and welcome to this screencast about list basics. This is a screencast in the Emacs Tapas series. So lists are kind of the basic fundamental thing inside Lisp. In fact, Lisp is named after them. Lisp means list processing. Um, so they're really important to, uh, to Emacs Lisp. And Emacs provides lots of facilities to, for working with lists. So we're just going to start looking at how to make lists. So the oh, if I could type, that'd be dangerous. List is the function in Lisp that makes a list. So if we control XE that, we can see that the contents of that comes out down the bottom. But there's another way to do exactly the same thing with a literal syntax. If we put a single quote before a list construct and evaluate it, we get exactly the same thing. This is a little more flexible because we can put a very deep structured list without having to further quote it. So we can start writing our data into our list. And you can see that I'm making a kind of database here of Marmalade contributors and the things that they've contributed. So we're going to add Magnus as well, Vmax rocks fame. Magnus writes JavaScript for a living. Yeah, Magnus has written lots and lots of packages. Um, but I'm going to put in his greatest hits as far as I'm concerned. Okay, and because we've got show parents mode turned on, which we show in the crash course. Um, you can see that Emacs is highlighting um, the ends of a list. So we can see that one's highlighted there, the top of the list is highlighted there. We can also go uh, backwards and forwards across the list. Escape, control, left goes back to the end of the list, and escape, control, right goes back to the end of the, the list. But actually, um, to get the full power out of list packing, it's best to use um, a list editing package like Smart Parens or Paredit. So I'm just going to package install Smart Parens. Now, Smart Parens is a fairly new package. Uh, Paredit is a, a package to enable you to uh, work with lists. It's been around for a long while, but hasn't really worked on anymore. So a guy called Foucault wrote a new thing called Smart Parents, which does everything that Paredit does and more. Um, the basic thing about Smart Parents is that once you've turned it on, it will automatically add the closing um, end for you. So if I create, uh, if I just hit open parenthesis it adds the close parenthesis and that's very useful but to get more than that we have to go and customize smart parents and really the interesting one is this because this turns on a whole bunch of standard smart parents bindings and we're going to turn off smart parents mode again and just turn it back on that can be automatic too, the uh, Smart Porens mode automatically set up for an Emacs Lisp. Um, so now I'm just going to go and replicate this uh, data again. You can see that automatically um, it puts in the close brace for me. It also does that with quotes, which does make life easy. And if I forget uh, that a particular word should have been in quotes, then I can highlight it and press quote, and it'll automatically highlight it for me. Um, so now I can enter my packages and Again, 
Now we have, oh, we don't need that. So you can see when I delete it, when I delete the list element, both elements go. So we want Magnus and we're going to put in a job. Anyway, you see the point. So now we can go to the end of the list and we can control escape control K will kill a list. I'm going to show you how to um, move around inside this list and we'll use smart parents features to add some more stuff to it. So I can move up and down normally. This is just line movement as it would be in Emacs, but I can also move between lists with escape control N. Escape control N. Escape control P will move back. And that's quite useful. So we still have the escape control N and we still have the ability to move backwards and forwards to the list. Escape control P. Um, so with that and line movement everything is kind of easy so let's just add another famous e-list packer. I don't know what uh, technology does for a living. Oh, I guess he's a he's a closure hacker. And uh, what packages has he written? Well, I know he works on NREPL. Um, so there we go. Now, if we evaluate that, we can see that we've got a whole bunch of data in there. So that's basically how to move around in um, lists and how to kill them. Um, you can also yank them back if we choose to kill this list. We can just do control Y to bring it back. If we do a much more complicated list, control X, control K, and control Y will bring it back. Sorry, that's escape, escape control K to kill a list. And control Y will bring it back. But now, what if we wanted to make this a variable? So, set Q next DB. Well, uh, I'm going to have to, I guess, escape control K and then do this and then indent each line, pressing tab on each line. Or there's another way to do this. If this data immediately follows this line, I can use Smart Parent's control forward slurp. That means to slurp this list into that one. I can do that with control. Uh, right arrow. So you can see what it did was it slurped the data, the following list, into this one. So now that paren used to close the set queue and now it wraps the whole thing. We can do that the other way with control left and you can see that it's exited that list. That's really a very powerful structure editing tool um, that you probably want to remember. Okay, so if we control X E that now, uh, now we've got next DB, that list is now in a variable. So what things can we do to variables, uh, to list variables? We can take the length of a variable. Again, I highlight that and I can uh, immediately um, turn the, wrap the whole thing in a sex. So length, the length of a list, this list is nine. Why is it nine? One element, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The internal lists, in other words, don't get counted. What else? We can take a particular element can't remember the documentation for ELT off the top of my head. So I'm going to turn on LDOC mode. ELT sequence N. Sequence N. So the sequence is next DB and I want the first element. The 
first element was job hacker. I actually wanted the zeroth element, which is Nick. So ELT is zero indexed. Uh, we can, of course, see other parts. What's the eighth element? The final element would be packages and REPL, Technomancy's packages. Two other important functions that are going to come up over and over again, and we're going to look at finally are car and CDR. The car of a list is the head of a list, the first element in a list. In this case, that's obviously Nick. The CDR is the remainder of the list. Which would be everything from here down wrapped in a list. Those things are going to come up over and over and over again. And there's one other interesting it, it's a little bit interesting to poke into why these are called car and CDR. Uh, that's one of the thing, the most esoteric things about Lisp that people new to Lisp often say, well, we should change this. They should be called head and tail because that's obviously what they do. The thing is that as they stand, they, it's a complete accident why they're called what they are. Um, the reason is that car and CDR were particular addresses on an IBM that address registers in an IBM CPU, a central processing unit, um, you know, in the 1950s uh, when Lisp was invented. But there's a good reason to keep them because they can be composed. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you write CADR, it actually means take the car of the CDR. So let's write that out separately and do each one bit by bit. So if I control XE the CDR of NixDB, we can see that that is the list beginning with job hacker, then packages. But if we take the car of that list, that's obviously job hacker. But we can compose those two things because car and CDR, those particular words, just happen to be composable. So we can write composition functions, CADR. And that's the reason that these functions have survived from the 1950s to the present day. These are in Clojure and any other uh, modern Lisp because it's useful to be able to combine them. Um, indeed, Paul Graham, when he wrote his new list called ARC, he tried at first to get rid of these and it was found that actually it's so useful to be able to compose these functions in this way um, that you might as well retain them. So we can do CDDR in the same way, and I wonder if you can guess what that does. And that's where we'll leave this episode. Thanks very much. There'll be more on lists, lots more on lists, in fact, and on other data structures that you can manip manipulate from inside Emacs. Thank you.